Hey everyone, Stacks here, checking out X Force number four. Welcome to the channel. Another week and another week of X Force absolutely leading the way in the Dawn of X series. In my opinion, nothing else in the Dawn of X from the Dawn of X titles is even close to this. Benjamin Percy writing Joshua Kassara uh, with pencils and Dean White and Guru Effects on colors for this issue. Back to the vibes of this book, this is the only one to me that feels like it has really continued the House of X, Powers of X storyline um, in any meaningful manner. Angel, uh, I'm sorry, Fallen Angels is interesting, but in, it, it's, it, it's nowhere near to the degree of just combative human versus mutant that this is. And part of the reason I really like this because it's it's almost like move, counter move, move, counter move. And it seems so far that the mutants are actually on the defensive. The the humans, every time they turn around, they're like, you know, the mutants are like, hey, we got our own nation state. We we have our own island. And it doesn't matter. We're gonna come in your island and we're gonna kill your leaders. Now, of course, the mutants can resurrect, and that's great for them right now, up until the point that the humans find out about the five. But these groups are just going at mutant them. And everyone's in and what's really driving it is greed. People want these plants. People want these life-saving plants, these uh these drugs. They want all the stuff that mutant them is trying to offer, but they don't want to recognize mutant sovereignty. That and they also see the mutants as a continued existential threat. They can eliminate all of reality. they they can they are huge threats to other nations. But I've rambled enough. Needless to say, I really enjoyed this book. High recommend. Go pick it up. You won't regret it. Let's get into it. The book opens at an Xavier Pharmaceutical Distribution site off the east coast of the United States. And it's basically off the shore. And suddenly you get SEAL Team 6 style dudes popping up out of the water, uh, scuba style. Scuba Steve and his aquatic commandos go up. They breach into this facility. And while they're in there, they make quick work of the staff, which consists of a Jamie Madrox duplicate. From there, we jump back to Krakoa, and we jump back to the Quiet Council. And this is where I have to tip my hat to Benjamin Percy, because last week it was the Sword of Damocles, talking about how the, the nation-state of Krakoa has to have a constant state of readiness, a constant alertness, because they're, they're always in trouble. There's always something gunning for them. This week he uses the literary metaphor of Hercules, Athena, and the 12 labors that Hercules had to go through in order to become an immortal. And he uses this basically saying that, look, Hercules is the strength, he is the brute muscle, and but Athena, she was the intelligence, she was the wisdom and the brain. And that's exactly what we have on this team. We have the muscle, we have Wolverine, we have Kid Omega, we have Domino, and later on I'm suspecting we're going to get Colossus because he was on the cover of number one and I haven't seen him yet. You also have the wisdom and the brain. You have Jean Grey. You have Beast. You have Sage. So basically you have this incredible intelligence capability there to direct this muscle to flex it where you need to and to flex it efficiently and effectively. I mean, this team has the potential just to be surgical with their strikes. With all that being said, they're, they're sent to this distribution site to investigate what happened. And when they get there, Jean Grey is able to basically remember and, re and recall and then recreate for everyone what she, or what the, the duplicate of Jamie Maddox experienced. And she basically creates a 3D model um, using his memories. And it's actually really cool, like some cool minority report stuff, but even cooler. Uh, Beast is walking around, he's checking out the weapons and stuff, noticing that the uh, the caliber on the weapons aren't the same as what attacked the um, at what attacked Krakoa during the assassination of Professor X. He also takes note that it's brand name tactical gear. So this is this is poss very possibly a different operation than what Xeno was executing. Or it's the same operation, just you know, a different arm of it, or um, or different operation completely. Who knows? We find out the dupe did live long enough to be reabsorbed by Jamie Maddox, but it made him, you know, just it's just painful as all get out for him. Well, as the investigation goes deeper and deeper, they start realizing that something's not adding up here, and they can't quite connect all the puzzle pieces until 
until Sage sits down behind the computer and realizes that there are tons of transactions here, but all types of different currencies, basically stealing money from Professor Xavier. A bunch of businesses from his portfolio end up getting money taken from them. things like Xavier Pharmaceuticals, Gifted Mind Technologies, Cerebral Films, Phoenix Law Offices, Blackburn Motors, Wolverine Waste Management, <laughs> all these companies are part of the portfolio of Charles Xavier. And when all this information finally makes it back to the council, Sebastian Shaw is pretty much, look, Xavier got shot, but he got resurrected, and Xavier got robbed, but he's a billionaire. I don't see the big deal here. But Apocalypse points out, look, an assault on Charles Xavier is an assault on all of us, just like an assault on Sebastian Shaw is an assault on all of us. And I want to point out that back in the branches of Krakoa at this point, Cypher is sitting back there hanging out. And last time we saw him, he was off doing New Mutants things. Sebastian Shaw gets a little bit more lippy, and then Apocalypse comes in and says, Look, the humans are not worthy. When you allow someone who is not worthy to taste of power, they will gluttonously and poisonously seek out more. Every empire's fall begins with a peasant's hunger. And everyone continues on kind of with this nonchalance, especially Mr. Sinister who makes an offhand comment and Jean Grey shoots him down. He says, look, I saw Charles die. Make jokes and make threats. Deny it all you like. But for about 24 hours, I know you felt the same panic and grief that I did. And Jean points out that, look, they have their soldiers. They're building their armies. They have their council. And they, we don't need to make the same mistake and assume that we're invulnerable. And Exodus asks the question. They've got their council. They've got their soldiers. I assume we're here to formalize the same. Who are our soldiers? And Professor X responds, X-Force has had many iterations in the past, but we're living in the future. Magneto chimes in, Krakow is not an island, it's a nation state. And at that point, <laughs> uh, Mystique is like, uh, a mutant CIA? Oh, Charles, that's how gross of you. They go back and forth, but ultimately it's down to semantics. If Athena is our CIA, then Hercules is our Delta Force, so we've gathered our intelligence. It's time to flex Hercules' muscle. And with that, we go to by far my favorite part of the book. You have Forge down in his workshop building all this organic technology. That's absolutely awesome. And right off the bat, he gets into it with Logan. Logan shows up and says, hey, we're here. You got some toys for us to play with? And Forge tells him, if you're looking for stuffed animals and wiffle balls, you came to the wrong place. But if you want outfitted with the best blades, bullets, and bombs, I got you covered, short stack. Short stack, I, I kinda like that. And with that, Forge gives him the rundown of all the organic technology he's been working on. For instance, he gives a, a, a glove, to an organic glove to Domino that goes over her arm that it, it has a blaster in it, it can convert to a blade, and as long as she keeps this thing watered and <laughs> I guess, you know, fertilized, it'll, it'll continue to develop and grow and it'll, it'll stay, she doesn't have to reload it, it'll generate its own ammunition. Forge, of course, asks Kid Omega what he wants or if he needs, he's, hey, what, you, what about you, Junior? And Kid Omega just informs him, look, I'm already the ultimate weapon, I don't need any accessories. And then Forge walks over to Wolverine, who's leaning over a vat of adamantium, just a whole punch bowl of it. And he says, this is Professor Xavier's orders, they're, whenever we've got to put you back together. And Wolverine looks down into it and says, it actually gives me an idea. Suppose you can make me, and then right at that time, Sage comes over to Mike and says, X-Force, this is Sage, suit up. We got to get to the hub now. Wolverine starts barking orders, let's roll. And they take off. They take off right to the gates, and, and Beast is briefing them on the way that, look, we have a location where some of our human allies are working there and it's under attack. And these allies are humans, so if they get shot and killed, they aren't, they aren't coming back. There's no, there's no respawn for them. The team breaks in a run, goes through the gate, they're charging through it, but the, the attackers at that time, they go and place bombs right by both sides of the gate and detonate it. And they detonate these bombs on the gate the moment that the team rushes through it. And the moment that happens, Domino stops, she, she, it, she ran through the gate, but she looks around and she realizes, I'm still in Krakoa. And she turns around to look for her team, and you get this shot on the other side of the gate. Kid Omega ain't getting up from that. Wolverine is 
down. He's he's chopped in half. He ain't moving. Don't know what's happening with regeneration there. But this shot seriously had me like, oh my goodness, this is the best X4. This is the best X-Men book right now because you don't know what's going to happen. It's insane. Now, I hope they have a bigger payoff to this. I, I hope going forward this isn't the, hey, you know, instant respawn back at the base and get ready for level two. But this is what I'm talking about. This is another example of the X-Men just being a step behind. You feel like they're finally getting some traction against these groups that are attacking them. And, and something like this happens. So you have another weakness. If you blow the gates, they can't come through. So these guys, we've already got a, a, a team over in the X-Men book, the, um, the old ladies, the Golden Girls, who can now use the gates at their own free will because they're expert botanists, or the horticulture girls. And then you have these guys who realize, hey, you can just destroy the gates and they won't come through. So all these nations where they, they had gates, like the uh, first issue of Marauders where they ha they took the gate into Russia, not, they, they can't do that anymore um, to, to extract people because we know these things can simply be destroyed. Of course, that means they need to start using Gateway more. And of course, the Marauders have a ship and all that. I'm aware of that. So I do want to point out that there was a really, really cool... Uh, white page this was actually funny not all these things that are intended to be funny have been funny this one was actually funny it had to it was forge's daily planner and he talks about all the stuff going on his uh beach side <laughs> beach side breakfast with xavier talking about how he had 20 turtle eggs krakoan spinach an omelet a pound of black market bacon and a gallon of black coffee and his agenda for the day is just make cool stuff he talking about him <laughs> checklist, sculpt mustache. Um, should our should we have a crack Cohen flag? Heck yeah, we should have a crack Cohen flag. Should it be on our weapons? You bet. But probably the funniest one was he he had this one that's developed crack Cohen body spray with extra he pheromones that smells like bacon and leather. Test out by walking past Domino. Does she look twice? <laughs> and it's also got a redacted portion talking about his homework that Short Stack Wolverine has requested. I build him blank. The question is, isn't should I? It's the question is how long should I make him wait just to annoy him? You also got things on here like wind suit or wing suits, missile launchers, perimeter defense stuff, all kinds of stuff that's on here. It's really pretty cool. He also mentions something about Black Tom and how Black Tom, he spoke to him the other day and he's referring to things as we and he thinks he's maybe got a screw loose. There's something going on with the merger between him and Krakoa. And he's going to have Gene poke around in his head and see what's going on. Your Crack Cohen cipher for the next issue is half measures. I don't, that's, I'm not ready for that. That's not funny, guys. But anyways, like I said in the in the intro, guys, this is the best X-Men book that they, that's going right now. Hands down, in my opinion. Um, absolutely, I mean, just, you don't know what's going to happen from, from panel to panel. Um, I'm excited for, for the next issue. Every time at the end of it, it always ends on a good cliffhanger. Every issue so far, I've just gotten, I look forward more and more to Benjamin Percy's run on Wolverine that's starting up in January, I believe. And uh, so I'll be there for issue one with that when it kicks off, guys. Anyways, guys, that's all I got for this video. If you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Help us continue growing the channel. Um, leave a like. It helps draw more more eyes, more views to the to the video. And uh, if you could go share this uh, on Twitter, Facebook, wherever. Uh, tell a friend and just uh, just help us grow this community. Uh, love listening to you, uh, reading the comments down below. And guys, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. That's all I got. Real comic stacks out.